many people. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So, um, salam alaikum everyone. Um, hi everyone that joined to today's meeting. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. In the name of Allah, praise be to Allah and blessings and uh, salutations and peace upon the, our Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him, his family and his companions. I want to welcome everyone for joining us for today's meeting uh, or today's event uh, per se. My name is Awab and I'm the president of the Laurier MSA at the Waterloo campus. And we're very excited to have you all here today. Um, like I said, I'd like to thank you guys for coming and I hope that this will be beneficial for both the non-Muslims and the Muslims that are in this meeting today. Um, this event is in collaboration with our other campus, uh, the MSA in Brentford. So I want to thank them for joining and uh, helping us set up, set up this event and everything. I'm just going to run everyone through our agenda real quickly. We're going to have the introduction uh, by me, the one I'm doing right now. And then we're going to have a Quran recitation by our brother named, uh, named Muhammad Huzaifa. And we're going to be talking, tackling the misconceptions, and I'm going to pass it on, passing it on to Dr. Um, Korsha. And we'll have a closing prayer at the end. So we're going to start, inshallah, right now with the Quran recitation. Sorry, Brother Huzaifa. If you're, um, Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Wa salam wa rahmatullah. Yaakum Allah wa barakatuh. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متسدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم ما شاء الله ما شاء الله ما شاء الله ساك الله خير بدر حديثة ما شاء الله Okay, so before I pass it on to Dr. Amjad Porsha um, here, I'm just going to give him, a, I'm going to give a brief introduction and then I'll pass it on to him. So Dr. Dr. Porsha or Porsha in English is an associate professor in comparative religions and Christian Muslim religions. He obtained his degree from the Jordan University and is a former lecturer of Islamic studies at the same university for, he's been teaching there for 15 years. 
Um, he obtained his Master of Arts degree in Quranic um, inter inter Interpretation from Jordan University in 1997, and he has in his he has his PhD in Comparative Religion Comparative Relations. Sorry, sorry, um, and Christian Muslim Relations from Birmingham University uh, in the UK in 2003. So, without further ado, I'll pass it on to you, Doctor um, Forsha, and whenever you want to go through all the questions, let me know. I'll be able to do that. Jazakum Allah khair, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The most compassionate, the most merciful All praise and thanks are due to him And peace and blessings be upon his Beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He who is guided by the will of Allah No one can misguide him And he who is misguided No one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I do bear witness that there is no God but Allah And Muhammad is his messenger Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما واجعل التفرق بعده تفرقا معصوما اللهم ولا تدع فينا شقيا ولا محروما Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم taught us by saying من لا يشكر الناس لا يشكر الله The one who does not say thanks to the people actually he is not thanking Allah سبحانه وتعالى So thank you very much for having me with you I'm honored to be with such an elite students like you in Loray University and all other MSAs and all students who might be joining us from other Canadian universities Jazakumullah khair, you are most welcome and thank you for having me Now, brothers and sisters, I was asked to tackle or to try to give uh, some kind of methodology how to deal with misconceptions about Islam the problematic issues that are raised wherever you go you know, which is most of them, they revolve, most of them, they revolve around the idea of war, jihad, violence, sword, blood, or women. 90% of shubhat or doubt or misconception, wherever you go, someone will be asking you about this. Was Islam spread by sword? Yes, no. Why, when, how? Okay. Uh, does the concept of violence is something basic in Islam? Yes, no, who told you? Then we start debating the history, the Quranic verses, the meaning, the scholar, ISIS, Taliban, yes, no, you guessed, the media, the mainstream media, misconceptions, misleading, you know, I, 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 this debate. So, therefore, please, let me say the following. We have about 11 uh, uh, misconceptions or some kind of uh, big questions. They were sent to me. Let's go just very quickly with the slide with Abdur Awab, if you may, just to let you know about what I'm gonna face. For example, we have, does Islam oppress women? Question number two. Now, what is jihad? Does it mean war? Is it a violent concept? Three. Now, why does Islam allow polygamy? Ta'addud. Why it is allowed in Islam? Four. Do Muslims believe in Jesus, alayhi salam, sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Now, number five. Is Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, like Jesus for Muslims? Do we view him in the same level, the same thing? Yes, no. Uh, another uh, misconception. Is Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, mentioned in other religious scriptures? specifically in the Torah and in the Gospel, for example. What, how do we look at this point? For example, was Islam spread by sword? Another question. Another one. What is Sharia law? Okay. What its purpose? What does it mean? What's the concept of Sharia law that you hear it sometimes, tens of times? They want to spread Sharia law. They want to do Sharia law. They want to apply. Okay, but what is Sharia law? 99.9999999999% they don't know what Sharia law is, but they keep saying they want to spread Sharia law. A lot of misconceptions. And another concept, for example, how is slavery understood in Islam? And some people, they say, why slavery was not prohibited in full at the early of Islam? You know, such questions, I don't know. Do you have other, other, other misconceptions? Okay. Now, what I will be doing, thank you very much, Brother Awab. Jazakumullah khair. Instead of going with a piece by piece, you know, I'm an academic person. Let me tell you something. Respected brothers and sisters, maybe this is the only opportunity that I will be having sitting with you. Maybe we will not meet again. So I'm always supporting the methodology of, instead of, for example, feeding me on daily basis, teach me how to hunt. Instead of giving me a fish every day, teach me how <laughs> to fish myself. 
So what I will be doing, I want to help you how to think about these problems by doing the following. My methodology, I will give you an introduction. This introduction explains major concepts about the whole idea of Islam. It will be like a platform. Then I will bring these misconceptions as packages. Once you know the foundations of many things, it will be easy for you just to say, okay, do you remember what I told you about uh, such and such? This is the point. Put the Lego. You know the Lego pieces? When you, when, when, it's like, like what I will be doing. I will be doing like portraying like a big mosaic things. You know, image. I will show you the image. Then easily it will be for you to put pieces in the puzzle. <laughs> now, Islam, it's as if some people were trying to make Islam as it's a cut pieces, you know, that makes problems. No, no, no. We have a clear image for Islam. Let me give you this introduction before I start tackling these doubts or misconceptions one by one or as packages. Now, in the introduction, number one, please bear in your mind that I am not a politician. I am an academic professor. <laughs> Why I'm saying that? Politicians, including media people, media and politicians, their aim is just, for example, to bring more likes or breaking the news. Politicians, generally speaking, on earth, they don't care about telling the truth or the reality. They care about that just to win the elections. <laughs> okay? Media, not necessarily they are concerned to tell you the truth or to tackle the problem, but necessarily they want to compete to be the first who are announcing the event. Academics, people of science, people of knowledge, like ourselves, are not like media people and politicians. We are concerned with the truth, with the evidence, whether you liked it or not. I can't decorate it. I must help you how to know why this is such and such, you know? So our approach will be an academic one. And I'm very happy that we have Muslims and non-Muslims because in such brain, you know, storming sessions, real uh, uh, deep academic sessions, we will be able really to fix the misconceptions. Unfortunately, not in the media or in politics, unfortunately. So please prepare yourself how to focus with me. And if you are a non-Muslim, please give yourself a time to put notes and think after I finish about what I'm saying. Now, number one, Islam for Muslims is a system of life. I repeat, Islam is a system of life. Islam is a constitution for humanity from their Lord, as Muslims believe. So, when we speak about Islam as a religion, please, 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 I beg you, don't understand the concept of religion for Islam through the Western European Christian Catholic Church experience. We are having nothing to do with this history because millions of Western people, very nice people, and they, they are seeking the truth. But their concept for religion, when it's mentioned, it's through which glasses? The glasses of their experience with Christianity. Christianity in Europe has a specific historical experience. It's, we have nothing to do with that. In the Western European church experience, religion confronted and had a big fight with their people. They reached up about 220 years ago in their French Revolution to some kind of settlement, which they called it in 1970, in 1998, which is the French Revolution, and they reached what we call now secularism. Now, secularism, it was a Latin word, means the world, al-alam, which means and one of its understanding to separate religion, which for them was the church in Europe, from the state, or detaching religion from life. 
So they ended up, since more than 200 years, generation and generations, they, end, they, okay, not Muslims, they, I'm talking about Western European Christian church experience in specific, but they are dominant now. So their view for religion, wherever they go, it goes there. So when religion is mentioned, they will think, okay, what is religion? The experience of European religion ended up by, when you say religion, Recording mo in progress. most likely religion means spirituality. Religion means private affairs between you and Lord. Religion has nothing to do with politics. Religion has nothing to do with tax money. Religion has nothing to do with, for example, state issues. What is religion? Religion is supplications. Religion is my personal redemption, my cleansing of my heart, which is true as part of the religion. But this is not the religion for Muslims. This is the latest version of Western European experience with religion, i.e. Catholic Church in Europe. <laughs> this is not the Islamic understanding for the concept of religion. By the way, this point will solve 50% of the misconceptions <laughs> by default. Because for us, we believe, this is part of the introduction. Now, another concept in my introduction. We as Muslims believe that we are continuation for the previous messages from God. We believe that God created a human being, starting from Adam, and he sent them prophets and messengers. We know about 25 of them by names, and we know that God sent many others we don't know by their names. So we believe that all prophets and messengers like Adam, Idris, Noah, Abraham, Jacob, Joseph, David, Solomon, uh, Jesus Christ, Muhammad, all of them, they were sent from one God. His proper name in Arabic is Allah, okay? In English they say God. Now, this Allah, God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, we as Muslims believe he sent prophets and messengers with one religion in terms of faith and values, no change. However, he sent different messages in terms of teachings regula and regulations, the practical things to be applied in our daily basis. So different messages. The word message or teachings in Arabic is Sharia. In Hebrew, it's Torah. <laughs> in English, it's law. <laughs> so Sharia law means the law of the law. It means the Torah of Muslims. So when someone says, okay, what about Sharia law? You are asking about the Islamic law, which, which is what? It's Islam. It's all of Islam. <laughs> Anything which tells you, yes, no, do, don't, like Jews they have in their Torah, it's the same. So, let's go back now. Don't judge me as a Muslim or me as an Islam through the Western Europe, I repeat, Western European Christian Catholic Church experience. Okay, please leave it aside. Listen to me as I understand my religion. My religion is a constitution of life, a system of life sent from the same God who sent all prophets and messengers. And we believe this is the seal of the messages, which contains all the previous. We as Muslims, we believe our Quran as a book, as a message, it's a constitution, okay? It's not the full law, it's a constitution. Like, for example, American constitution. Then you have American law. Then you have tools to apply the law, democracy, okay? So, therefore, one of the most biggest misconceptions that must be fixed at the very beginning when you listen to Islam don't view Islam like Christianity with all due respect for other religions look at me like a constitution in a modern state exactly so Muslims Muslims they believe in the concept of a modern state starting from all concepts of a country of a state that has a law for finance 
a law for money, law for family, law for war, a law for, for example, defense, which includes the army, a law for families, a law for every conduct, every aspect in your life is part of this country, state law. This is how Muslims understand their system, Islam. So when we say Islamic religion, we are not discussing spirituality just. We are not discussing the private supplications and your private prayer at night with your Lord. No, no, no. Okay? So, even the concept of the biggest misconceptions about Islam is, and by this I will finish <coughs> my introduction, then I will start tackling. One of the biggest misconceptions when we talk about worship, the word ibadah. Because we believe as Muslims, we were created in specific. God says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Verily, indeed, I've not created the jinn and the human beings, but to worship me. Okay. The word worship is misunderstood among Muslims themselves, even Arabs who understand Arabic. For many, many reasons. The word worship, which in Arabic, ibadah, from abada, the root verb is abada. Okay, ibadah. Now, translated worship. Now, the concept of worship for many people is ritual worship, which means like when you go to the masjid, when you go to the mosque, when you do the ablution, the wudu, when you perform your prayer, when you go to the pilgrimage, for example, or to do the umrah, when you go to hajj, for example, you know, when you fast the month of Ramadan, when you observe the month of Ramadan, these are called ritual worships. Now, the word worship in the verse which we were created to apply does not mean just ritual worship. Rituals are less than 5% of Islam. Let me give you the definition of worship. Worship, ibadah, means in Arabic, when you go to lexicons, when you go to the dictionary, you know, the old lexicon. What's the definition of literally of the word in lexicons? قال عبادة تعني الانقياد والخضوع التام دون أدنى شرط عبادة means full obedience, full submission without any kind of preconditions for anything. So you might be a worshipper for yourself, your desire. You might be a worshipper for a person or a party or a country or God. <laughs> so this is general. عبادة worship in Islam means to Submit yourself to the will of your Lord in every single aspect of your life. I repeat, submit in every single aspect, which means your personal life, family life, food, clothing, drinks, politics, state, war, travel, money, everything. When we understand this about Islam, that Islam is a constitution of life, and Islam is a system of life, and it's the seal of the religion, sorry, the, 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 the shara'a, or the teachings of God, and it's for humanity. And of course, Muslims believe that Islam was not sent for Arabs, no. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed Prophet Muhammad, as we believe, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا All people. I am the messenger of God for all of you. So this constitution has been designed by God for humanity till the day of judgment. Depending on this, this introduction, let's come to understand the following misconceptions. The idea of jihad, sword, violence. I will not waste your time and my time. Ask simply a question. Is there a state on earth without an army? I repeat, no. forget Switzerland. Switzerland has a very, very, very special status after the Second World War. Now, any normal, for example, United States without an army, is it a state? <laughs> okay, no. here, we Canada. Canada, do we have an army? Okay. So, okay, what is the purpose of the army? Spread roses? Or frying uh, eggs? Or spreading cookies? What do armies do on earth? 
they are ready to fight, defending themselves first of all, and attacking, attacking any possible threat. Plus, traveling and fighting evil people to save oppressed people. <laughs> True or false? I repeat, any modern state, they have armies. Armies, they are called army because they have arms. Now, United Nations, do they have special troops? They go to spread peace. How do they spread peace? By sending troops with machine guns, and though they go kill people sometimes to establish peace. Please focus with me. United Nations, do they have troops with weapons? And sometimes they have, I repeat, they have to fight and kill to settle peace? Yes or no? Definitely yes. This is Islam. Please don't forget your time with, what is jihad? What is jihad? Islam is a system of life. It's like modern states. Jihad, its literal meaning means to struggle. And it has a personal jihad and a general meaning. To struggle all kind of obstacles in your life. Yes. But, well, okay. Uh, does Islam promote peace? No, 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 no. Islam is a system. It promotes justice. If someone will attack Muslims, they must fight. It's an obligation. So if they can't keep their dignity without fighting, okay, they have to do it. Like Americans, like British people, like French people, like Canadian people, all nice people, they have armies and they go fight to, to save themselves. Islam. So maybe it's a big mistake to keep saying Islam. Is, no, no, no. Islam preaches justice. And justice sometimes will not be applied unless if you fight. This is what is fight. This is jihad. Does Islam use the sword? Yes. All religions, they use the sword. All countries, they use the sword to defend themselves and to fight their enemies and to save the oppressed. Period. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Now, if you want to say Islam was spread by sword, okay, this is a big mistake of ignorance. Because I will give you just a quick, if you want to challenge me with the statistics, with figures, you know, figures, you can't play with figures. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. By the way, by this, the concept of violence, jihad, all of these things, it's covered. Let me give you now the practical, historical evidences, which means the concept of violence. Because don't judge Islam through the word of violence. Because what do we mean by violence? Any armies using violence on earth, even United Nations. If you want to say anyone who's using a power. To fight anyone is a violent, it means all countries on earth, they are, they are using violence, including the United Nations and United States and Canada, all the countries, because they have power and they use it to defend themselves or defend others. Now, if you want to say, okay, when do we justify fighting or justify, what does it mean justify? You have valid reasons, ethical reasons, legal reasons, okay, depending on something acceptable by law to fight. This is Islam. We are not just chickens sitting there and anyone comes, they want to kill us. Okay, we are spreading peace, please, just okay, kill us. No, we are no, 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 no. Islam asks you to, to protect your dignity. Okay? When someone is about to kill you, you have to fight back. It's like any normal group of people on earth. This is Islam. But what about, now for example, <clears throat> the, the, the historical evidences of this. Just simple, simple example. And I have to, I told you, I'm an academic, I'm not a politician. I'm not gaining any, any one of you to, to, to go and to vote for me, okay? Not even in the social media. So I have to say facts for you, because you are seeking the truth, Muslims and non-Muslims. Prophet Muhammad, in his 10 years, after the 13 years in Mecca, for non-Muslims, maybe you don't know, <coughs> Maybe you don't know, for example, that Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa peace be upon him, he stayed in Mecca for 13 years, then in Medina for 10 years. In Medina, he established the what we call the Islamic states, okay? I was trying now to destroy this image by, unfortunately, you know, 
those terrorists of ISIS, unfortunately. You know, the concept of Islamic State, it's, it's, a, it's a normal concept for Muslims historically. So, Prophet Muhammad established a state at that time. Now, the state was in need to defend themselves because the polytheists, the non-believers of the Arab pagans, they were fighting them. So, Prophet Muhammad, according to the historical records, which is our historical records, he made like a small, about 70 plus battles, we called Ghazwa and Syria, okay? Ghazwa and Syria, two different, two different issues, it's right. When a group of soldiers, they are sent to fight someone, either to defend or to attack or to save someone, if, if a Prophet Muhammad with them, it has a name, if Prophet Muhammad was not with them in person, it has a name. Some of them is Ghazwa or Syria. However, about 70, 70 small and big fights, let's say 10 up to maybe 12,000, okay, they had fight. In all of these wars, those who were killed from the opponents, the other side, the non-believers who were fighting Muslims, according to our records, they are less than 400. All of them were killed. 10 years of fighting, I repeat, 10 years of fighting, those who were killed less than 400. Go and now see, see all other cultures. First World War, Muslims have nothing to do with this. Second World War, the total of casualties who were killed in First World War, Second World War, basically it's, to many, to many statistics, the minimum that I have read is about 58 to 62 millions, the maximum is 82 millions. And by the way, most of them, they were not killed by mass destruction weapons. Even Hiroshima and Nagasaki by Americans, it killed just in Hiroshima 125,000, not millions. Most of them, they were killed with the, the classic, you know, tanks and, you know, machine guns, 80 millions. So when someone say Islam preaches violence, so please, excuse me, excuse me. Mao Tse Tong, okay, and communism in China, and the... Russian Revolution, the Bolshevik Revolution in the United Soviet Social Republic, USSR, which now has been minimized to Russia. When they established in 1917 as an communist atheists, okay, they killed about 80 to 100 millions to establish their state. In China, about 80 millions. So, you know, Communists, atheists, Western, democratic, or secular, all of them, when they wanted to protect themselves, in their point of view, they killed tens and hundreds of millions. So what's the point of coming to me? You say, the Islam has spread by... So what sort you are talking about? If you are talking about defending myself, it's a common sense right. If a sword of attacking the enemy before he attacks me, it's a common sense right that all armies on earth they are doing. If protecting others who are oppressed, okay, please, I am proud to say Muslims, they, we, we were at that time the United Nations of Earth. <laughs> what, what UN does now? I let me ask you, United Nations sometimes when they feel that a group of people in a country, they have an oppressor, a regime, a dictatorship regime, don't they send their troops on behalf on a group of countries to fight that regime to save the people? We, we, don't we do this now? Now, in 21st century, yes, we do this. As human beings, Muslims used to send their troops to save the oppressed people from many countries at that time. This is the whole idea of jihad and fighting and violence. If you want to seek the truth, this is the idea. Compare it with what I'm saying. If you want just to keep, God forbid. If you don't want to listen, wallahi, by Allah. If Gabriel, you know, the archangel Gabriel, Jibreel came by himself to tell you that Islam did not do, you will not believe because you don't want to believe. So this is very simple. By this, I have answered the questions of, you know, because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big issue about to tackling every single point, because I'm giving a general idea as a methodology. Type. I will connect this with the idea of slavery, because it's close from it. Why slavery was not prohibited in Islam? Let me tell you something. Please fix the misconception. 
Slavery is not an Islamic <laughs> thing. <laughs> slavery, it's a culture of people on earth used to be. Jews, they have slavery. Christians, they have slavery. Greek, they have slavery. Romans, they have slavery. Persians, they have slavery. Pharaohs, they have slavery. Indians, Hindus, there was all people I challenge. If you know about... <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Go ahead, read. Sorry. So look what happened. You need to understand the historical context. Slavery is a basic part of the people on earth at that time. I believe not that time. Just recently, a few tens of years ago, United States, they stopped slavery. And you know this. By the way, the war between North and South in the United States, just less than 200 years, was because of what? Was because the North wanted to free slavery, and the South of the United States, they will, their economy was completely dependable on slavery in their farms. So they were fighting the North because they want to free slaves. We are talking about decades, just in our neighbors, the Americans. So it was a culture of people on Earth, in Europe, in Asia, in Africa, wherever you go. It has nothing to do with the color. Slavery from white, slavery from black, slavery from any color you could imagine. All people, they are slaving each other. Now, the most important, powerful, powerful tool for people on Earth to enslave others was the invasions and wars. They attack, they kill, they occupy, they enslave. This is the culture of people on earth. Okay? Go and read that. By the way, even Plato, even Plato with his utopia, when he imagined, you know, utopia, the very idealistic city, he was not even to imagine a city without slaves. So, when Islam came, sorry, when Islam came, Islam started growing in an environment where, where 100% of people from different religions, cultures, races, they depend on slavery in their life. It's part of the economy. It's an industry. It's a power. It's farming. It's industry. So Islam came. When you ask me, why Islam? Wait, wait, wait. Have you understood this? Okay. On that, look how Islam was manifested. Islam put tens of what we call them in English the expiation or the atonement, which is kafarat. He put about 13 different gates to free slavery. Like, for example, if you killed someone by mistake, you will not be forgiven after your repentance unless if you free a slave, for example. If you had the sexual intercourse in the day of Ramadan with your wife, okay, you will not be accepted and forgiven unless if you free a slave, for example. And, and, so if, if you made an oath and you wanted to break it, you swear to do something. So we, is called, we call them kafarat. Kafarat, which is the expiations or the atonements. Now, Islam came and opened about 95% of gates to free slaves in the society gradually in a very, very clever social, socio-economic, logical way because it was rooted in the culture of earth, okay? But did not prohibit slavery 100%. Why? Islam kept just one small gate, no full prohibition. The reason, because Muslims, they were attacked and had wars with different cultures around them, and they were enslaved. Muslims themselves, males and females. Persians, they were fighting them. Romans, they were fighting them. You know, people in the south, uh, you know, Arab, you know, uh, uh, Polity, they were fighting them. So, they had a lot of enemies. All of them, they were enslaving. Please focus with me. All cultures around Muslims, they were enslaving Muslims, males and females. They will be a slave boy and a slave girl, completely. All cultures and religions, Christians and Jews and all of them, all of them they have slaves. So, what, what, imagine how silly Muslims will be, how weak, how stupid Muslims will be, that their religion tells them, when you fight with someone, if they captured thousands of you and made them slaves, and you were able to take part of them, don't enslave them. 
Just keep, give them food and take care of them. Then give them a salary and say bye bye. Go back to your country. Don't do anything. But no problem with your brothers who aren't slaves there. No problem with your sisters who aren't slaves there. What kind of stupid attitude is this? Will be. <laughs> what kind of weakness of a system of life? It's a state. It's a state. It's a country. Like any country now. So this simple gate that the, not the full prohibition of slavery was left, this 5%, just to protect yourself that what you do with me, I will do with you. Now, later on, people, because of the new civilized way of thinking, slavery, in theory, should have stopped. But it did stop. But Muslims, they were the first group and nation on earth who put a system to, flee, to free slaves. If I have a time to give a full lecture about how people who used to be slaves in Islam, when they are freed, they became big scholars. They became big, high-ranked people, which did not happen in any other culture. So when we say, why slavery was allowed, understand in this context. When you put it in the context, I believe, if you are seeking the truth, you have to respect completely the amazing achievement of Islam and Muslims in this. Now, if I want to do it in a little bit more academic and more political attitude, please look to other cultures, what they do with African peoples, and we know what Britain did, French did, and how many millions they killed from Africans who were brought as slaves just, I'm talking about a few hundreds of years ago. I'm talking about 200, 300, 150, 120 years. So I'm talking about Islam for 1,400 years, God established this system to free slaves and to keep you there to protect yourself. Understand it in this way. So by this, the concept of jihad, sword, violence, slavery is covered. <laughs> okay? Let's move to another concept now. The concept of women in Islam. Which includes hijab, includes dressing code, includes oppressing of women, includes polygamy. <laughs> Many different things. Endless questions about this concept. Now, you can see the main question that I was addressed with. Does Islam oppress women in one single word? No. Do you want the proof? You can't understand the power of the evidence unless if you understood the context of the status of women when Islam came. And by the way, please I beg, I beg you to go and check what I will be telling you about. Go and search after I finish. When Islam came, women on earth in all different cultures, on top of them, Persians, Romans, Greek, Jews, Christians, Hindus. And I challenge, if you can prove to me that women in these cultures, I repeat, Greek, Romans, Europeans, which is, you know, the Greco-Roman culture in Europe, <laughs> or the Judeo-Christian culture in Europe, <laughs> or the Persians, or the Hindu. If you can prove to me, to bring evidence, that women, they used to have the rights to buy and sell, or to choose the husband, or to divorce, or to own their properties, or to say their opinion in many things. Okay? If you can prove to me, I'm ready to leave Islam and to declare my apostasy. I repeat, if you can prove to me that this used to happen in any culture, you know what I'm telling you? What I'm telling you, women, they were oppressed in all cultures on earth. Go and read about Romans, how they used to look at women. It's just a sexual object, woman. It's a, just a sexual object. Go and see, you know, some cultures, women, they are burned alive with their husbands when they die. In all of these cultures, women, generally speaking, they did not have the right to choose their husband or to divorce. When Islam came, please compare this. Islam gave the rights to the woman to own properties, the right to choose the husband, the right to divorce, the right to donate from the money, and the biggest beautiful issue, 
she started enjoying the status that a male in the family must bring money, earn money to spend on her, and she is in no need to work to earn money even if she's a multimillionaire. If you can prove to me that any culture did this, like Islam, wallahi, 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 I'm ready to declare my apostasy and I will leave Islam. If you can prove this to me. Women, how someone dares to say Islam oppresses women? And go and read. Just go, go to Mr. Google. You know Mr. Google? You know, I hope Mr. Google is a neutral, let's say, just go and ask. What was the status of legal, for example, from legal point of view at the time of the Romans for women? Have women, uh, for example, were women having the right, for example, to do such and such and such and, and go and read, just go and read, okay? And go. Now, another thing. If someone says that Islam oppressed women, let me give you this big chalk now. And I, I told you, I'm an academic, I'm not a politician. I'm not seeking your acceptance or happiness. I'm seeking the truth. The biggest, and by Allah, if Allah created me a woman, okay, and I knew what I will tell you now about Islam, I will convert to Islam because of it. <laughs> what is it? Women, and I beg the pardon, and I apologize from any brothers who follow Judaism or Christianity, but this is the truth, the original sin in the Bible. The concept of original sin in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, which is part of the faith of Jews and Christians, who is responsible on kicking us out of the Jannah, of the paradise? It's Eve, our mother, which is completely unacceptable and rejected in Islam. Woman, you say, Islam came 1400 years ago, 600 years before that, Christianity, 2000 years. 3,400 years ago, Judaism or Moses, peace be upon him, in specific. So we are talking 3,400 Jews, 2,000 Christians, 1,400 Muslims. Now, women, they were accused of being the main reason for the fact that we are suffering on this earth because of the concept of the original sin. In the Islamic understanding, Islamic faith, God sent a clear message. The Satan whispered for both of them, for Adam and Eve. They both listened to Iblis, the Satan, and both they ate. So the responsibility was completely justice, equality. You see equality in Islam? Both of them, they were equal and committing the sin, not Eve, not the woman. It's not just that. When God, when God issued the final verdicts of what they have done, Quran says what? وَعَصَى آدَمُ رَبَّهُ فَغَوَى When the final verdict of the divine judgment was issued, God says, and therefore Adam did sin his that or he sinned with regard the right of his Lord, which means he excluded Eve, as if the Quran says, look, you are the man, you want to be the man, you are in charge, you are the people of muscle, you want to lead, okay, hold the responsibility, face the consequences. <laughs> so who can say Islam oppresses women? If the original sin, she was freed from it by two verses, the whole problem completely is finished. And maybe the time does not, as, as an expert, you know, um, my field of speciality is comparative religions. And what, my, my biggest deep study is in Christianity and in the history of Christianity. But you anyway, know, the time does not have the time to tell you about what happened with women because of this way of thinking. So how come we say Islam oppresses women? So, you know, Islam, uh, uh, let me please go to Wikipedia and ask Wikipedia or ask Mr. Google when French law allowed women to have full free rights 
to do whatever they want with their properties and real estates that they own? I challenge you. I will not give you the answer. Go and ask. When French, I'm talking about secularism and liberty. I challenge you. Go and see when. 1400 years ago, Muslims, they were giving the woman the full right to marry, to choose, to divorce, to own money, not to bring money to own. And even if she's multimillionaire, she's not asked to spend one single penny, even if she's a multimillionaire. So where is the oppression of women? I don't know. But however, let me fix final misconception. If you want to tell me that we have some backward people in the Islamic culture who have their own cultures and they oppress women, Islam has nothing to do with this. If you want to use this way, let me, please, I beg your pardon. If we saw a policeman in any civilized country misusing the system, are we gonna attack the whole police system? Or we say this is an individual or a group of bad, evil people who are misusing the power? This is another story. This is completely another story. The great powers now who preach, who are preached, like Americans, for example, they are preaching democracy and the human rights, all kinds of these beautiful things. They do some kind, of, they discover that they have a police officer, they have someone in the CIA, in the FBI, they are misusing the power. They are not attacking the system. Their system is designed in a way to provide justice as much as they can. Misusing the system, we will bring the person who did the mistake to the court and we say this is a wrong, but we are not attacking the system itself. So by this, please don't mix between Arabic culture, many Arab cultures, they do not allow women to see their husbands before marriage. This has nothing to do with Islam. This has nothing to do with Islam. Many Arab cultures, they, do, they take the... the, the uh, Al-Mahar, I forget it in English. Uh, uh, who speaks Arabic? Mahar, Mahar in English. Dowry, Dowry. Dowry, yes. Jazakallah khair. Okay? Now, the Dowry. So, some Arab cultures, some, okay? They take the money of the Dowry, which is a complete gift for the woman. In Islam, it's haram. This is some Arab cultures. Some of them, they prohibit women from going to universities and schools. This is an Arabic culture, has nothing to do with Islam. The best female scholars in the history, they are women. Sahabiyat, Aisha was a big scholar. Tens of Sahabiyat, you know, they used to teach. Now, the oldest, the oldest university on earth in Tunisia, it was established by a Muslim female woman, Fatima al -Fihri. And they keep silent when talking about this. So we don't have the problem at all. Misapplication, yes. All cultures they have. We have Jews who misapply their religion. We have Christians. I mean, okay, now, all the world, the last five days, they are talking about what? 216,000 sexual, okay, harassment assault for kids by 3,200, you know, priests in the Catholic Church in France. Do we have the right to accuse Christianity where we talk about the priests? <laughs> you choose. Quarter million sexual, you know, harassment by 300,000 and we consider it a French problem. Some priests in the church, no one is discussing the religion. So the same, the same thing. When you see bad application for some Muslim countries, Muslims about two billions now. This is not Islamic. This is their culture. Arabic culture, African culture, Pakistani culture, Somali culture, regardless. This is not my problem. Like all other cultures, we have bad people in America, bad people in Canada. By the way, in Canada, now Canadian, Canadian system is established to promote justice, is established to protect the people's rights and the new immigrants. However, don't they have, include them, the uh, Proud Boys? Proud Boys, they are what? Terrorist group. They are Canadians. Proud Boys, they are not part of the system. They are destroying the system. They are not representing the system. So the same thing. When we have bad, misapplied things, it's their problem, not the system problem. So this is about women. Now, polygamy. This is about oppression of women. Sorry, Professor, and uh, our doctor, I want to just cut you off for a second. We have 
polygamy and then just Jesus al Islam in in uh, in Islam. But we we are running a bit of time, so we just don't mind going a bit faster. For okay, how many minutes do I have? Um, let's just say five or eight minutes. Oh, very quickly. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Very quickly, polygamy. Please, please differentiate between something that is allowed and and you are, or something that is an obligation. We go back. Islam is a system of life. In life, we have a lot of problems. Mainly, we know from the history of humanity, wars. When countries engage in wars, ninety percent of those who die, they are men, which is a common sense in a human sense. Wherever you go, men are less. Men, they go to tough works, very difficult, very dangerous work. Casualties and death cases from men are always, in the history, are much more higher. So always you have extra men, for example. So Islam put polygamy as a solution in case if you need it. It's not part of what you have to do it. Please, just that's it. We have a huge law. Big constitution, when you face a problem, use this law, but with a condition of justice. Because if you can't do justice, it will be prohibited. So what's the problem? Very simple way, instead of doing else. I hope if you have more time. But now, Jesus Christ, let me tell you something very, very quickly. As I told you, we believe in 25 prophets and messengers by names. We believe all of them they sent from God. All of them, they are prophets and messengers, they were chosen by God. We respect all of them, we believe in all of them, and any, any disrespect for a moment for any one of them, including Jesus, the Muslim, if, if, for example, if you made a joke about Jesus, or Moses, or Abraham, you will be committing apostasy. You will leave the fold of Islam immediately, from faith point of view. Okay? Out of respect. So basically, Jesus for us is a messenger of Allah, full respect, full dignity, highly appreciated with all other prophets and messengers. They came from the same God, but however, we believe that he was the one before the last. The final one is his brother, Prophet Muhammad. That's it. Prophet Muhammad, we consider him the best and the final, because God decided to do so. But they are all sharing the status of they are prophets, messengers, high respect, no one in Islam has the right. And by the way, Jesus, peace be upon him, is mentioned in the Quran more than Muhammad sallallahu <laughs> alayhi It's not that that. The Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus. I mean, I, sometimes, you know, sometimes we have an academic discussion. I challenge my, my, my friends, Christian friends, I say, I challenge you, if you can't find something about Virgin Mary in your book better than what we have, I'm ready to leave Islam. So what do you have? I say, have you read chapter Mary? <laughs> Maryam alayhi salam. High praise the family of Al Imran and Maryam alayhi salam in an amazing way. Okay? Talking about her honesty and chastity and purity and her status and her story in an amazing way. Many, especially Christians, because Christians, they have a very white heart inside themselves. So when they read chapter Mary, many of them, they cry and some of them, they convert to Islam. They think that all the time we are saying bad things. No, in our Quran, we respect Mary, we respect Jesus, and we believe he was given, she gave him the birth in a miraculous way. And we attack completely anyone say bad words about this. Alhamdulillah, this, this is Islam. Islam is a system of life from God who sent Moses and Jesus, and it's a constitution which was designed to solve problems of humanity up to the end of the day of judgment. And I, can I just finish? You know, I know still we need a time. Please, let me send just one message. This message for Muslims and non-Muslims. If you want to understand Islam more, if you have some doubts, go and listen to some big, big, big scholars who decided to leave their religion, regardless what was their religion, and they said to become Muslims. Listen to them, read to them what they discovered in Islam, or otherwise, why should they come to a religion of violence or oppressing women. I'll give you very quickly names and please put notes. Go and listen and read. From America, read and listen to Jeffrey Lang, professor in mathematics. Jeffrey Lang from America. From Canada, 
Go and listen to Gary Miller, the priest, Christian priest, Gary Miller, who became a Muslim. From uh, France, the French scientist Maurice Bocay. Maurice Bocay, who wrote a book and made a comparison between the Bible and the Quran about the scientific indications. From the German ambassador of Morocco, Murad Hoffman. And if you wish to read for a Muslim president, which is the Bosnian president who passed away, may Allah give him mercy, Ali Izzat Bigovic, Islam between East and West. Go and see those non-Muslims. They used to be atheists or Jews or Christians. They read Islam. They discovered they decided to be a Muslims. Why? Go and listen to them. You will discover an amazing, amazing facts. But unfortunately, the media or the hidden political agenda has another word to say, unfortunately. Finito. I finished. I wish uh, I had more time. <clears throat> yeah, no worries. And Zakallah, thank you so much for, for enlightening us today with the presentation. I think it was very well done. Um, so before we finish off, I'm just going to send quickly um, Dr. Amjad's links. So his Twitter, his Facebook, and also uh, just a quick bio on his on his uh, on our website, and then we'll be able to finish off. Jazakumullah khair, mashallah. Thank you very much for this invitation, and I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to give you the power to be, inshallah, a true ambassador of Islam. And I welcome again on your behalf and on my behalf as well the the non-Muslims who are with us, who decided to listen, and I hope that all of us we will teach to the truth. Thank you very much. Perfect. Yeah, just to quickly end it off, inshallah. Uh, may Allah also uh, allow us to understand what has been said and to look into everyone um, that you mentioned right now. Uh, may Allah protect us and safeguard us during this pandemic. And like I said, again, allow us to understand what has been said. Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fi akhirati hasana wa qina adab al Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. For those who are non Muslim, I just retired a closing dua or uh, closing prayer here to end off uh, our event. And I'd like to thank everyone again for coming, and we'll see you in our next MSA event, inshallah. God willing. Thank you. Zakumullah Khair. Zakumullah Khair, thank you for the, uh, speaking to us today. Barakallah Fik. Zakumullah Thank you for inviting me. Barakallah Fik. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Salaam alaikum. Salaam. I am not able to see how to close it. Okay, now <laughs> thank you very much. Salam alaikum. If people are still here, I'm just going to send all the names of the doctor just mentioned now. Okay, Salam alaikum, Rahmatullahi Barakatuh. Allah Tikum al Afiyah. Subhanallah. Fina Saharani Magul. La ilaha illallah. طبعا يا اخوة سامحوني يا اخوات يعني المحاضرة كانت بالانجليزي هي عبارة عن لا اله الا الله المحاضرة كانت عبارة عن اتحاد الطلاب في جامعتين كنديتين طلبوا مني اني احكي عن كيف نجيب عن الشبهات حول الاسلام من مثل انتشار الاسلام بالسيف وموضوع العنف في الاسلام وموضوع الجهاد وموضوع اضطهاد المرأة والقصص هاي كلها اللي وين ما تحضر لها تتردد فنحن أعطيناهم إن شاء الله تصور يعني إذا الله سبحانه وتعالى أحيانا وبقي في ال يعني في النفس في ال يعني عندي قدرة أنه ما تتخيلوا قديش واحد لو معلي صوته ويحكي بتعب إذا ربنا سبحانه وتعالى أعطانا إن شاء الله البركة بإذن الله الله يبارك لنا في الوقت يمكن بكرة بعد وإذا قدرت ما بعرف لسه إنه إن شاء الله أرد أعيد لكم شو اللي حكينا باللغة العربية إن شاء الله لا تنسونا من دعائكم السلام عليكم لو في طاقة كالآن بعيد لكم لكن خلاص الزور هون انتهى خلاص الله يجزيكم خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته